Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to speak about uh, blotting techniques. Uh, actually, I'm going to uh, continue speaking about uh, blotting techniques and I'm going to speak uh, specifically about southern blotting and northern blotting. In the previous video, um, I told you that there are three blotting techniques, western blotting for to detect proteins, southern blotting to detect DNA and northern blotting to detect RNAs. Uh, in the previous video, I spoke about no, uh, Western blotting, so in this video, I'm going to speak about Southern blotting and Northern blotting. Uh, why? Because uh, simply the principle of these two is very, very similar. So basically, they are the same technique, but with like some differences because this one is used for DNA and this, was, this one is used for RNA. So let's start first speaking about southern blotting technique. As I told you, southern blotting technique is used to detect specific sequence of, or of DNA. So seeing that they have a cell, eukaryotic or even prokaryotic cell, uh, and then I extract the genome from this cell, so I, so I have a genome uh, sample. The thing is that I am interested in searching about um, a specific sequence in this genome maybe a specific gene or a specific sequence uh, I want to search about in this gene, in this genome, sorry. Uh, what I should do first is that I should perform agarose gel electrophoresis. So step one in southern blotting is agarose gel electrophoresis. Uh, I also have a, there is a previous video in my channel talking about agarose gel electrophoresis so if you didn't uh, watch it I also recommend you to go watch the agarose gel electrophoresis video. Now the first of all the uh, genome or the DNA sequences should be separated using agarose gel electrophoresis but as I told you before uh, at the genome is a one long chain uh, we should first uh, cut the DNA or digest it and to do so we use um, a couple of enzymes called restriction endonuclease enzyme. The restriction endonuclease enzyme is going to cut the DNA in different places and is going to uh, produce several sequences of the DNA of the genome. The thing is that um, to decide which endonuclease enzyme to use, I should know the sequence I have. Uh, why? Because the, uh, as I told you in the agarose gel electrophoresis video, the restriction endonuclease enzymes are, are many. So there are a lot of restriction endonuclease enzymes, and each one of them detect the specific sequence on the genome and cut the DNA down, downstream this sequence. So in order to choose the restriction enzyme I want to use, I should know the sequence of the, um, of the gene of my interest. After digesting the DNA or the genome, uh, I apply this sample on the gel, on the agarose gel electrophoresis, using agarose gel and an electrical current. Then the DNAs will be separated. Of course, I, can, uh, I might have several samples, and then the DNA sequences will be separated according to their length. Um, the thing is that in order to search about a specific sequence, um, I should perform southern blotting. Why? Because if I visualize the, the gel like this, the, uh, I will see the gel in this way. I told you about visualize, visualization in the previous video about agarose gel electrophoresis using ethidium bromide, cyber green, or other molecules. I would see the gel like this. So the thing is that I cannot differentiate the sample of my interest from other samples. Because I'm interested in only one in, or, in only one sequence, sorry, I cannot differentiate the sequence of my interest or the gene of my interest from other genes. And to do so, I should perform southern blotting. Southern blotting. Let's say I have this gene. I'm in, I'm interested in uh, visualizing this gene. So first of all, I should know the sequence of this gene. Let's say this is the, the gene of my interest. I should know the sequence of this gene, and then I should design a complementary sequence of this gene. So like this, for example, let's say A, A, G, G, T, C, T, T. Then I should uh, uh, design a complementary sequence. So T, T, C, C, 
AGAA. And then this sequence is going to be called probe. So this probe is going to detect this sequence because it's complementary to it. But how can I perform this? So first of all, in order to perform southern blotting, what I should do is that I should transfer the sequences in the gel or the samples of DNA which are in the gel to a membrane, a nitrocellulose membrane or another type of um, nylon filter membrane. Uh, why should I do so? Because uh, when I transfer the DNA samples on the membrane, the DNA samples will bind on the surface on the membrane of the membrane and then the probe can detect the sequence and bind to it, which cannot be done in the gel. Now, how can I uh, perform the transfer uh, step? In order to transform the, uh, the transfer step, first I should use a chamber like this filled with the buffer. The buffer is an alkaline buffer. Um, then I use a sponge. So this is a sponge. Then I put my gel. This is the gel which contains the DNA samples inside. Then I put the, the membrane on a direct contact with the gel. Then I use paper towels and then I use a weight, a kind of weight in order to compress all the, or, or, all the stuff together. So what I have here is that I have the alkaline buffer, I have the sponge, the gel, the membrane, the DNA binding membrane, the paper towels, and then a weight. What's going to happen then in this orientation is that I will have uh, the bottom, which is very rich in water or very rich in the buffer. And then it will in this part, uh, there will be high water pressure. And in this part, which is totally dry, there will be low water pressure. Because of this, there will be a kind of capillary forces which is going to drive the water or drive the buffer from the area of high uh, water pressure to the area of low water pressure. So it's going to move the water or the buffer against the gravity from the bottom toward the top. Now what's going to happen is that when the buffer is passing through the gel, it's going to take the DNA samples with. But then when the water is going to pass through the membrane, the DNA samples will stick on the membrane. Why? Because of ion exchange forces. Because the DNA samples are negatively charged and the nylon membrane is somehow positively charged. So there will be ion exchange forces between the DNA samples and the membrane and then the DNA samples will stick on the membrane. But the water will pass through the membrane because the, the membrane is a kind of filter. So the water can pass from the membrane and then it will reach the paper towels, which are going to, uh, to become wet. So I can, uh, I can see that the paper towels are becoming wet and then I see that the, uh, the process is working. Now what's going to happen is like this. So this is the gel, this is the membrane, and then where, when the water is going to pass through the gel to the membrane, the DNA samples are going to be uh, transferred from the gel to the membrane. And then I will have the membrane. What I should do is that I should bake the membrane um, on 80 degree of Celsius for two hours or applying ultraviolet radiation to fix to fix the DNA sequences on the membrane, I should perf uh, perform type of heating, like uh, either using uh, 80 degrees of Celsius or using ultraviolet radiation, like uh, any type of, a type of uh, heat. Now what's going to happen is that my DNA samples will be uh, fixed on the membrane. The thing is that these DNA samples are all double-stranded because when I cut the DNA, I cut it as a double strand. So the, all the DNA sequences which you are seeing here are double-stranded DNA. So if I'm going to apply the probe, uh, the probe which is complementary to the sequence of my interest, the probe cannot bind to this sequence because this sequence is a double strand. So what I should do is that I should treat the membrane with a denaturation buffer 
in order to denaturate hydrogen bonds between the two strands of DNA and then in order to separate the two strands of, of DNA. So after uh, treating the membrane with a denaturation buffer, all the DNA sequences you are seeing here will be double-stranded DNA. They will be separated. In this stage, I should then apply the probe, which is going to detect the uh, sequence of my interest and bind to it. In order to be able to, de to detect the probe afterward, I should couple the probe with a type of uh, molecule that, it, that can give me a signal. This type of molecule can be either a fluorescent, like this fluorescent uh, molecule, or it can be a chemo chemoluminescent. Chemoluminescent uh, is a substrate for a certain enzyme. So if I apply the probe with a chemo, coupled with a chemoluminescent, I should then treat the membrane with the enzyme. Then the reaction between this enzyme and this uh, substrate will give me a certain signal. Or I can uh, couple the probe with a chromogenic dye, like uh, any type of dye, which, which is going to give me also a signal. The thing is that this probe is going to detect the sequence and bind to it. And then I can visualize uh, the membrane in a dark chamber. And then I can see the sequence I have. So I can say, yes, I have this, uh, this gene in this sample, but I don't have it in this sample. So I can, I can see in which sample I have this gene and in which sample I don't have the gene. So this is West, this is Southern blotting, sorry. This is Southern blotting. Now let's speak about Northern blotting. Northern blotting is very similar to Southern blotting, but it's used to detect RNA. So let's say I have a cell. This is a, the genome. These are the RNAs. Then I extract the RNAs, which contain the sequence of my interest. Let's say, let's say that this is the sequence of my interest and I'm going, and I want to detect this sequence on the gel. First of all, as we, uh, as we uh, did in the southern blotting, what we should do is to apply agarose gel electrophoresis. Now, maybe you are asking yourself a question, why would, I, why would I search for a DNA sequence? So if I, let's say, if I want to know if this genome contains a several gene or not, why would I search for DNA sequence? Why don't I search for the, uh, why would I search for the RNA sequence? Why don't I search for the DNA sequence? And that's it. The thing is that why we search for the RNA sequence uh, is to see if this gene is expressed or not, or to what extent this gene is expressed. Because in certain type of cells, the gene might be overexpressed or non-expressed. And to see if this gene, so for example, I perform uh, southern blotting, and I see that I have the gene. Now, I, I see that I have the gene, I know that I have the gene, but I, I want to know if this gene is being expressed or not. Then I search for the RNA, because if I have RNA, then the gene is being expressed. If I have high amount of RNA for this sequence, now I know that this gene is overexpressed. Or if I have a very little amount of the RNA, then I know that this gene is is not so much expressed. Because of this, I search for the RNA sequences. Okay. Now, what I should perform is first. Um, oh, first of all, the RN, You should know that the RNA sequences uh, exist always in a secondary structure. So the RNAs are always in a secondary structure. And if I apply the probe, if I design a probe which is complementary to this sequence, and I apply the probe directly on the membrane, the probe cannot bind to this sequence because this sequence is a secondary structure. So what I should do first is to denaturate the secondary structure of the RNA to produce a linear structure of the RNA in order to be able to bind the probe with the RNA. To do so, I apply agarose gel electrophoresis, but with a small addition, which is the addition of for, uh, formaldehyde to the gel. So what I do is I, uh, is I add formaldehyde to the gel, and formaldehyde will be responsible to denaturate secondary structure of the RNA to a primary structure. 
which can be then detected by the probe. Let's say that these are uh, these are the samples separated. Then the sample, the secondary structure of the RNA will be denatured to a primary structure, which can be then detected by the probe that I designed for this sequence. Now, similarly to what we saw in uh, southern blotting, uh, let's say this is the uh, sequence of my interest. We should first transfer the RNA sequences from the, mem from the gel to a membrane. Uh, and it, and the, the process is the same what we saw in southern bloating. So first we use the chamber, we use an alkaline buffer, a sponge, the gel, a membrane. Here we, here we should use RNA binding membrane, which is the same. It's the nitrocellulose membrane, paper towels, and weight. Similarly, the cap capillary forces are going to drive the water from the area of high water pressure to the area of low water pressure, and then the RNA sequences are going to be uh, to stick on the membrane because of ion exchange, uh, because of an ion exchange forces, because the RNA are, RNAs are negatively charged, and the membrane, the uh, nylon membrane, the nitrocellulose membrane, is a type of positively charged. So then I will have the RNA samples uh, stuck on the membrane like this. Then I can apply the probe on it. Uh, the probe here is an RNA sequence. So we have uracil instead of uh, thymine. Uh, and yes, this is the, the, this is the probe. The probe should be also coupled with either with a fluorescent or with a chemoluminescent with using a, an enzyme or with a chromogenic uh, dye, the same what we used in southern blotting. And then this probe is going to detect the uh, sequence of my interest and is going to bind to it. Then I can visualize this sequence in a dark chamber, chamber and I can see how much, DNA, how much RNA I I have in this sequence, then I should know if this gene is being expressed or overexpressed or not expressed. This is everything I wanted to tell you about northern bloating and southern bloating. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you really enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, uh, subscribe the channel. There are many other interesting videos in the channel. Uh, if you have any suggestion for next videos, write in the comments. If you have any questions, also write in the comments. I will answer you and see you in the next video. Bye.